It's good to be back. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in a tailgate downtown. Yeah, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in a tailgate downtown. Yeah, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in a tailgate downtown. We want to welcome you to season number two, two, two on Tailgate TV. We have a special, 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 special <laughs> episode today. Episode. Um, you may know one of our sponsors, Sonic, one of our main sponsors, yes. loves teachers. They do. But not only Sonic, Tailgate TV, Brad. We love teachers. We do. And I don't know if you knew this, but this week, this week that we're in right now. This one? The, not next week. Not next week. It wasn't last week. What? We're past that one. This week. This well, the week we're in is a week that we appreciate our teachers. Should be more than a week. <laughs> I appreciate at least every ten day. days. That's pushing. Now. I was going to go with nine. Okay. All right. So what we've done is we have tracked down one of search the country. <laughs> our favorite teachers. Favorites. She's my favorite teacher. Teaches me stuff every day, Brad. <laughs> you need it. <laughs> Accurate. Word. Um, we have <laughs> we have Megan Ermiter here with us today, um, who is a teacher. Uh, she teaches, what do you teach, Megan? I teach middle school special ed. I have all three grades, six, seven, and eight. And that is why she hangs out with me so much. <laughs> it's so fitting. For those of you that don't know, this is my lovely girlfriend, which may be why I'm a little biased when I say she's my favorite teacher. Well, and I was going to say, you know, teaching is close to home for all of us because not only, obviously, Megan, but my son's a teacher. Absolutely. My father-in-law is a teacher. Absolutely. My brother-in-law is a teacher. Everybody loves teachers. My sister was a teacher. She's retired. Well, now, most, she, most people love. Most yeah. teachers are good. Yeah. yeah you know, well. there, there's some. Yeah. Um, but, Megan, here's what we've done. We have found a list on the internet. We are not original. No. We found a list. As you could tell by watching this many times before. We found a list on the internet. And it is 15 funny facts about real teachers. We may not make it through all 15. Who knows? Some of these are garbage. We didn't make the list. But we're going to see. And it wasn't a teacher that made up this list. I bet Absolutely not. not. No, no, no. Everything they do is great. Yes. Probably but a student. We're going to probably. <laughs> We're going to see um, how you feel about these facts. See if you think you're a real teacher <sighs> or if the list is just bogus. The first fact is real teachers real teachers, will eat anything left in the teacher's lounge. Absolutely not. Oh, What will you not eat? See, I thought that was a given. <laughs> I, I, it's number one and fact. You mean like like things people leave in the fridge or like, like if That's people bring assumption. treats and like... They're like, oh, here's some to me, cookies if that I brought. If it's left in the fridge, it is a treat. Yeah, you're the <laughs> expert. You tell us. I would not eat anyone's leftovers in the fridge. Not, no. not on a Tuesday of a long weekend. Now no. you don't want to do that. Or after Christmas break. I will, no. I will tell you, I had my lunchbox in the fridge for just about a week, and I didn't eat everything in it, and it was just mm. sitting there, so I wouldn't. Was it gone? No. It never just disappeared. No, I actually took it with me. It's. In my apartment. So this first real fact is indeed cat. She had cauliflower in there, but at the end of the week, it looked like broccoli. <laughs> Just saying. It's a new way to cook broccoli. Yeah, no, I would not eat anything in the teacher's lounge. Okay, so that is cap. Factor cap. <laughs> new is that what we're doing? That's Factor. what we're doing now. <laughs> okay. We, we need a cap for you to put on if these are cap. <laughs> Factor cap. Real teachers grade papers in the car during commercials and faculty meetings. Um... They shouldn't be grading papers when no. they're not getting paid. Absolutely not. Hey, they're, that's thinking. Yeah. yeah, you only you only work while you're contracted hours. I'm not working outside of my contract hours. They don't pay me enough for that. That's me true. either. I try to tell my boss that all the time. They me try to too. make me work like crazy. <laughs> me too. Some of those people. Real teachers never sit down without first checking their chair. Mm. No, I sit down all the time. My kids know not to mess with me. Oh, oh. <laughs> they know. They Cause, know. Because what? Tax? Glue? Because, I, I mean, I've seen that happen on TV. I heard. 
her a story story hypothetically of uh, a young lady that I'm close with um okay a, a, some relation to me okay in kindergarten she was in <laughs> kindergarten she, she it, Megan you know where I'm going with this I, story I know exactly where you're she, going um, shout out Lucy first of all uh, <laughs> just in this hypothetical story I'm just I just want to shout out Lucy my beautiful pageant winning niece we'll throw a picture of her up on the screen she's great obviously um, not back, by bloodline but go ahead back to the hypothetical situation though there was this there was this kindergartner that I heard about okay <laughs> And she got ISS, uh, and her hypothetical mother called me to say, you won't believe what your hypothetical niece did. She's in, <laughs> Name hypothetical Lucy. <laughs> hypothetically. She said she's in ISS. Well, when I'm growing up, ISS meant in-school suspension. It still means the same thing. Yes. She was in, in school suspension in kindergarten. Ask me why she got ISS in kindergarten. Hypothetically ask you hypothetically. or to ask you? <laughs> she was accused. Of course. Of spitting on her teacher's spitting? shoes. Okay. And I said, that doesn't sound like uh, this hypothetical niece that I have. No, she's, she's sweet. Yeah, she's a little hypothetically. sassy. But she wouldn't do something like that, at least not the one I hypothetically know. Right. And uh, Emily said, no. Said The teacher said she wasn't mean. She wasn't being malicious. She was trying to be funny. She grabbed a mouthful of water and said, in order to make the other kids laugh, she spit it on her teacher's shoes. Hmm. So... Hmm. That is my teacher story. Little, we should have Lucy on to talk about that. Oh little uh, little switch up there from a spit shine. <laughs> the, shoe, she, the shoes were just dirty. Uh, evidently. So, true or false, real teachers... Real teachers. ...have never heard an original excuse. Mm. You know, I want to I wanna say... No, because my kids don't even come up with excuses. What do they tell they just you? Just don't. They just don't do the work. And then they're just like, "Sorry, I didn't do it." Yeah. They even say sorry. No. It's I did. Right. Miss, my kids miss I like, didn't do it. What do I? What do I? Or literally, all of the work was on the board for them today. All they had to do was write it on the paper. I said, "There is no reason you shouldn't get an A." What if I don't do it? <laughs> You're well, gonna get an F. That's a reason you wouldn't get an A. Wait, wait, wait! I got a question. So. What do you feel like is the most, maybe not the most common, but the most like talked about excuse for not having your homework? Dog ate it. Mm. Dog. You ever heard that? Nope. Kids don't even do their homework. Right. And so Kids don't even have homework. And hypothetically <laughs> may not have a dog. <laughs> hypothetically, the dog may pee on it or on the feet. It's all computer homework. Gross. It's not paper homework. The dog, can't, the dog chewed through my charger my and my computer died. was... Yeah. yeah. That's I guess I do hear that I one. I hate it when that happens. Sorry, Miss. My Chromebook died, Miss I. Well, where's your charger? The dog chewed it. That's mm -hmm. right. Have yeah. fun paying for a new one. <laughs> <laughs> True or false? Real teachers. Real teachers are solely responsible for the destruction of the forests. Of the oh, <laughs> I see that. That's so funny because homework. I I printed off like 120 copies this morning, <laughs> so that's so funny. <laughs> so that is And that fact. was only for like one class. <laughs> and how many classes? I thought you were going to say one kid. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to be in her class. <laughs> <laughs> My backpack's heavy. Oh, you got... Heavy backpacks are no joke. Nobody <laughs> wants a heavy backpack. No, it's backpack. funny because kids will have... I mean, all they have to have is their computer, right? Right. And they their backpacks are so heavy, full of stuff. And I'm like, what do you what do you have in there? A backup computer, and then a backup to the backup computer. At least that's what I hear. All you need is your computer. That's right. I've heard that. I feel personally attacked. <laughs> so true or false? Factor cap. Real teachers give themselves away in public by the dry erase markers smudges on their fingers. Occasionally. Okay. Had to finger check. check. My finger. Finger check. Okay. Okay. There's you know. Yeah, I think that's almost worse than mechanics. I was going to say painters. You know, painters, mm -hmm. like guys that do car painting, you know what I mean? On, and they have. There's a guy on TV that I watch that's a car show, and that you, and that you can see him a mile off because every finger is like 12 colors. Okay, I have a question on this next one. I don't know why gloves aren't a thing. They're not. Evidently. They're expensive. Ever since COVID, they skyrocketed stock. I bought stocking gloves. We've been thrilled with it. Um have a question with this next one. Maybe you have an answer. It says real teachers can sense 
Gum. Is that even a thing anymore? Are kids not allowed gum? to chew gum? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kids can chew gum. Okay. I actually yell at my kids all the time because they're... <laughs> I say, if I hear that gum, How you're going to... <laughs> <laughs> New sound on TikTok. <laughs> I say you're gonna. I'm gonna make you spit it out if I keep hearing it. And, and then like, you stick it under the table. That's just, but that's just how I chew my gum. Well, then you don't do it in my classroom. <laughs> yeah, I have made kids spit out their gum before because it's so annoying. There's occasional gum under chairs and desks, but like, then kids are like, "Ew, it's under the desk." I'm like, "Get a Kleenex, take say, it off." Like, and if it's fresh enough, hey. Ooh. A, a nice warm yeah. gum. We Have go, you ever had we warm go, gum? We go back to the uh, <laughs> the the teacher's lounge again. You know, it's still there. Hey. Well, this has been fun. Brad, do you have any questions for our wonderful guest before we let her go? No, but in all seriousness, teachers do a great job. They yes. work a lot of hours, and I, first of all, not they, outside I, their contracted hours. Well, <laughs> I want to say, you know. Um, my children were very blessed to have great teachers that helped. My wife and I was talking about this they the other day. They went to the day. Butler School, though, didn't they? They did. And they had great And they did kidding. so many great, helped them along the way so much. And a lot of the success, even though it's, you know, they're still young, but even some of the success, well, a lot of the success that they've had in not only graduating from college and getting into a career, is, you know, the teachers played a huge part of that. And they, I'm so thankful for them. I appreciate them so much. And really, teachers don't sometimes realize what kind of an impact. I know they all want to make an impact, but I don't think sometimes they realize how big of an impact they have on kids. And it's it's a tremendous, tremendous blessing to be able to be a teacher and be able to really guide kids into the things that'll make them happy. Cause that's, you know, people will say, well, you know, try to find a job where you're happy and then you're never at work. Well, you know, not every job's easy all the time. Teachers jobs, not easy, but they do a great job of getting kids uh, and, and really building their self-esteem, their confidence. And that carries on throughout their whole lives. I think on that note, you talk about, uh, we're going to go off script here, off script. I know this, this episode was so scripted, so we're going to get off of it for a moment. Yep. yep. I think we should end. You talk about the impact teachers have made. In naming a teacher that's made a great impact on us, Brad, you can go last because I know for you to think back that far. It's oh, you're talking time. about me? We're going to all name a teacher that I, I don't know if you can remember those names from 50 years ago. Um, but for me personally, I had a, his name was George Lee. Uh, Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee, and I don't even think he's teaching anymore. I think he was teaching as he was getting his law degree, and now I think he's a lawyer or something. Very good but uh, at the time I was in high school at uh, Ridgeway Christian School, RCS, he uh, was our history teacher, our assistant principal, and our basketball coach. And a uh, small school, and that man did a lot of things, and he was just one of those, uh, you know, I think he knew that teaching wasn't going to be his career, lifelong career. And so he took it more of a, my job at this time is to have fun with these kids, but also to get them to enjoy learning. And that's really what he did. And, you know, not only in the classroom, but in athletics. And uh, I'll admit, I spent some time in his principal's office, um, maybe where my hypothetical niece uh, gets her wild side from. Uh, I remember one time we were the Eagles, the RCS Eagles, and I was sitting in the office one day. I went about once. Uh, uh, I had a the same teacher. Uh, I won't say her name. She was a great teacher, but we butted heads. And uh, I had her for three periods in a row. Oh, God. I had her for English, no, thank for you. Spanish, and for yearbook. And it was the last. It was sixth, seventh, and eighth period, the last three periods of the day. I was stuck in her classroom. So at least once a day she sent me to the office in one of those classrooms. One day I was sitting in Mr. Lee's office. And uh, we were the Eagles, so we had Eagles everywhere. And I was like, if I develop a phobia of Eagles, can I just, like, refuse to come to your office? And he was like, sit down, <laughs> shut up, go back to class after this period. Um, but, no, for real, uh, George Lee, uh, Mr. Lee, had a great impact in me. Um, did you have a teacher that's just impacted you? Uh, actually, yeah. Okay. Um, so one of my middle school math teachers, or not middle school, high school math teachers, her name was Mrs. Riedemann. Can and you say that name, Mrs. Riedemann? Riedemann, okay. Yes. And um, she was also my soccer coach. And she was just like, I, I first off, I'm horrible at math, hate math, want nothing to do with it. But yet I still teach math this year. Funny thing. Awesome. Um, so I didn't like math at all. And 
I don't know if I really learned a whole lot, but like she just like it was just a good environment to be in you know like even though I didn't like math I still like to be in her class and like hang out and I think that it helped that we had that relationship when I was playing soccer too so it was just like it was just fun to be around and you were her superstar athlete y'all always get special treatment all those jocks and athletes they get special treatment (laughs) and it's it's ridiculous here at tailgate tv we want to put a stop to the special treatment of athletes especially these soccer players that think they can just do whatever in the classroom (laughs) Tired of it. <laughs> Tired of it. Tired of it. Brad, you've had some time to think. Were you able to come up with it? You know, no one knows your teachers. Just make up a name if you have to. Well, I was going to say, they're, they're honestly, and I moved a lot. I, from third grade all the way through college, I was only in one school for one year. And so I went to five different high schools when I was, and never failed, but I was in five different high schools. And two of those high schools I went to twice. One of them was in Arkansas, years. right? That, is one that where your favorite Harrison, teacher's Arkansas. from? No. Oh, okay. Even though I had some great teachers down there, uh, Coach Tice, who was my football coach, made the biggest influence on me down there. However, when I was in eighth grade, there was a there was a woman that was the um, principal of the school, okay, and also the kindergarten teacher. If that makes any sense because it was a small school okay. over in Davis R twelve over by Clinton. Small little rural school. Is it still a school? It is still a school, yeah. I think there was 50 people in the school, and that was people, including teachers, the custodian, the... uh, the Students? The the, uh, great, by the way, the great kitchen staff there. They did a great job. (laughs) So forget the teachers. Let's take a minute. they They would make... They would make rolls at home and then bring them. Oh, wow. oh my goodness. Couldn't do that now. Sakes of mercy. Okay, so Mrs. Hupp was her name. Hub. Hupp. 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 With peas. That lady was um, a ph- phenomenal woman. Uh, she was so nice, but yet, uh, you know, kept everybody in check. There were four boys in eighth grade, no girls. There were three girls in seventh grade, no boys. So the seventh and eighth grade consisted of seven people. Uh, her grandson, as a matter of fact, was in my class in eighth grade. But uh, Mrs. Hupp was a really, really, really great person. I really, um, I enjoyed her so much because, again, she she led well. Um, the teacher that I had in eighth grade was great as well. I cannot remember her name for the life of me, but um, Mrs. Hupp made a big, big impact on me as far as really getting me to understand what I needed to do at that eighth grade. You know, going into high school next year and all that. And those stuff. eighth graders are you can attest to this, maybe those eighth graders they're not easy to deal with. Even though Brad, I'm sure you were a shining. Example I, well, of a student. Poster again, boy for eighth graders. There was four of us. You didn't get away with a lot. I mean, <laughs> it's not like you could hide in the back of the class. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, but, uh, but that was, again, that was a really fun year. Yeah. Now, I moved from there over to Clinton, and then we moved to, um, I think we moved to Harrison, Arkansas after that. And Harrison was, I, I if there was any school that I would have wanted to stay. And it was Arkansas school. It was. I loved Harrison. It was a great place. Woo pig. All the way. On that note, uh, go gobs. We were the goblins. Oh. Were you Harrison goblins? Yeah. Are they still? Uh, absolutely. They should change. <laughs> Why would they change that? <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Why would you keep that? I, I had so a Letterman's jacket had goblins right on a, on the side of, across from the H. Right. I'm sorry. And people would ask me all the time, "Is that like a turkey?" It's a gobbler. Couple gobbler. Like, no, it's like Ghost of the Goblins, dude. Ghost of the Goblins. <laughs> On that note, um, real quick, I want to tell you guys <laughs> that we have. What do we have, Brad? We have some fun things. Fun questions. No. Oh, things. Oh. <laughs> things. Fun things in the works at oh. Tailgate TV. We've got two episodes that are dropping momentarily. We have. Not uh, hypothetically. <laughs> no, these are realistically. Realistically, this is this is fact, no cap. <laughs> we have dropping Tuesday, 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 Tuesday. Yeah, we have what's up, brother? Um, <laughs> dropping on Tuesday, we have Carter Trumbore. Trumbore, um, you don't want to miss that episode. He holds about every record at Butler High School, and he comes on, and we have is the season two premiere 
of tailgate tv and we did it big he comes on talks about uh it was about a 45 minute episode man we didn't plan for it to be that long but that kid he's just you get a lot of great information and then after that we have another great guest we have cameron ty anderson and he comes on and talks rodeo talks about getting bucked off with some horses um which has happened to him believe it or not um, but he comes on talk to us about his hair, uh, how he grows it so well, the products that he uses. Um, it is just a heck of a show. And uh, you may see a couple things different with that one, but I tell you what, you're going to have a lot of fun watching it. So just stay tuned, stay subscribed, stay locked in to locked Tailgate in. TV. And uh, we have some sponsors that we would absolutely love to thank. Um, Brad, who do we have that we would love to thank as sponsors? Well, obviously Sonic. Yeah, who loves teachers as much as we do, or maybe even more. Well, and again, our Sonic here in town does a great oh. job. I mean, they they uh, have a deal where they can raise money by the teachers mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. um, some car hopping, that kind of thing. They do a lot of other stuff. That and again, I I don't really real think that people really get how much Sonic oh. helps and our schools. Our, it, and it's you know Sonic in general, the chain loves teachers. Absolutely. But our Butler Sonic, I would put up against any other Sonic in the nation. I think they do a phenomenal job at going above and beyond even what corporate does and just steps it up. And just, yeah, our Sonic is great. Well, the Butler local Sonic is amazing. I remember when I was on the school board here in town and we had an issue with, with sickness going around our elementary school. Mm -hmm. And so the kids were having to bring cups and well and mm -hmm. bottles of water to school sonic brought pallets wow a bottle of water and gave to the school district so they those kids could have drinks and that kind of thing and uh and again those are small things in you know mm -hmm. in pe people's thoughts because you're like oh it's just a bottle of water yeah but that yeah, when you talk hundreds and hundreds of bottles of water yeah, that's the that money that sonic's yeah, giving and away that's tremendous and mm -hmm. the fact that yeah. they thought about doing it and were willing to do it was yeah. outstanding i can't thank miles enough can't thank josh enough for what they do here at Sonic. O3 Customs with our hats. They do a great job. Also, the tumblers, which those tumblers are super nice. Like them a lot. Those would be If you're looking for a present to get for your teacher, for teacher appreciation, there you go. hit up Love Tyler Covington, cups. local guy, Adrian, Missouri. He's a Bates County deputy. Hook him up. And hit he, him up. He'll he, hook you up. Will too. And um, you can like put their name on that. He'll etch on there whatever you really want so if you want to say you know thank you to your teacher that it is it's a, it's a good uh, quality it has to product. be a nice message though it has to be <laughs> it would be yeah, a thank you we good. like you not a i'm glad the year's over we're done with you <laughs> even though some teachers are probably thinking that i'm ready for it to be done <laughs> <laughs> we also want to thank mid-america live cns graphics we want to thank the butler <laughs> chamber of commerce we we love Mid America Live. Okay. Yes, we do. We want to thank Prepcast, and we want to thank uh, Emmanuel Baptist Church. We'll see you shortly on Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. <laughs> this episode of Tailgate TV is brought to you in part by your Butler Sonic, your local drink stop. We always say the podcast is better with a drink in your hand, so run a Sonic. And grab you one. And if you haven't tried their brand new fries, I tell you what, they're pretty great. Go get you some. 